Hello everyone, in this video we'll be using the Godot Engine 4.1 and we'll be going over three different ways to implement Jump. So for this tutorial we'll be using the character body 2D node and to give it some character, no pun intended, we'll be using the animated sprite 2D, collision shape 2D, and audio stream player 2D child nodes. So starting with Jump 1, this method is actually built in into Godot. If you create a character body 2D, it actually comes with a template to start with. It gives you the ability to jump and to move left and right. So this is all built in. It handles a jump velocity, a character speed. Um, the physics process is called on every frame of the physics engine. And so it's a little different from the process function, which is every frame of your game. And so when you press the UI accept button, which is spacebar by default, this script will add the jump velocity to the Y axis of the velocity variable. And then if you hit left or right, it gives it a direction and that direction is applied to the speed. And that is applied to your velocity in the X direction. And then the change in velocity is applied when you call the move and slide function. So that's essentially how the first jump works. However, in order to make it look nice, we're going to add a few things. So we're going to add our references to our animated sprite 2D as well as our audio stream player 2D. When this function is ready, we're going to give it a default animation state. So when we hit the jump button, we'll be playing the jump animation as well as playing our sound. If we hit the left or right, as long as we're on the floor, we will walk. If we're not on the floor, we'll just continue with our jump animation. And then if we're not pressing left or right, then we will just play the idle animation, which is the default animation. This part here just handles our direction, so this will flip our sprite left and right, depending on the way we move. And then last of all, we add a signal that when the animation finishes, we go back to the default animation. So now that we're finished with that code, we will go run this scene and see how this first jump looks. So our character's walking and here's our jump. So pretty basic, but this is what's built in into the Godot engine. So the second method of jumping is very similar to the first. The main difference here is that we are going to create a motion variable using a 2D vector and passing it into the move and collide function. Uh, the move and collide function essentially when there is a collision, and in this case it's the character 2D and our floor, when a collision happens, it immediately applies a motion on our character 2D. And so in this case, when we are on the floor and this is called, it's going to shoot us up in the direction that we gave it. And so we are going to run this scene and see what happens. So as you can see, when we press the space bar, we're immediately put into the air. And then we fall back down due to gravity. So for jump three, we're going to make a jump that is affected by the amount of time we hold in the space bar. So in order to do this, we need to create new variables. So in this case, we've got an, an initial jump power, a current jump power, we've got a max jump time, a jump timer, and then we've got a state variable on whether or not we are jumping. And we've also made a slight adjustment to the gravity, and this is more a stylistic choice, but we've times the gravity by three to give it a little more force. So if we are on the floor, jump timer is set back to zero, is jumping is set back to false, and our animation is set back to the idle animation. Otherwise, if we're in the air, we add to our jump timer using the delta variable. So if we press the space key, we set is jumping to true, and we apply a jump force using our jump power initial. Uh, we will go over that function a little bit later. And our jump power is set to the jump power initial as well, and we play our jump animation as well as the sound. Now while we are still pressing the space bar, and we are jumping, and our timer is less than the timer max, we are going to increase our jump timer by our jump velocity step, and once again we are going to apply the jump force. And this will happen every time physics process is called. 
And so this is the code we've had before, which handles just the animation states. And this handles uh, the direction of our sprite. Now here's the apply jump force function we talked about earlier. Basically, we just pass in a power. And that power is applied to our character 2D's velocity in the y direction. And so we've also added a new signal, which is the input signal. And so when we have released the jump button and we're still jumping, we basically set our jump timer to the max time, and this will ensure that we no longer go higher during our jump. So this allows for short hopping. So now that that's all done, we'll play this last one. And notice that our character is able to jump at different heights. So we've got the short hop as well as the long jump. And so this is kind of more of what we're used to in a Mario game. So in this scene, I've got all three jumps side by side, so we can look at a comparison of the jumps. And there you have it. There's all the three jumps we went over in this video. So that's going to be it for this video. Comment below on which jump you think looks best, which one you prefer. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. I plan to do more tutorials in Godot in the future, as well as continue to post devlogs on the video games that I'm currently working on. Hopefully that was helpful. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you next time.